Entering a sales order in Acumatica can be done easily by navigating to Acumatica and over on the left hand side clicking into sales order. Once I click into sales order, I can select new sales order. I can also make this a favorite by clicking on the star for future reference. So let's dive in. Let's click new sales order. And this will load the new sales order screen. By default, my sales order is a regular sales order type, but if I needed to change this to a return with replacement, Shopify order, or transfer order, that can be done easily by selecting the order type in the list. Let's go ahead and close this out and continue on with the process. On the screen, you'll notice that the sales order number is new. This is for a new sales order entry. We do not have a sales order number to look up yet, but if I did, I could just go ahead and search and find my sales order number here. The status of this order is open and I'm entering it today. The requested on date is the date that my customer has asked for the sales order. In this example, they want it one week from today on November 3rd. The next field we have is customer order. On the customer order field, this would be the same as the customer purchase order. This may be named to a different field in your version of Acumatica, but by default, it's called customer order. So we'll just call it PO12345. The next field is external reference. This is if you have another reference field that you would like to reference on the sales order for your customer. Moving along to the customer field, if I know my customer information, I can begin typing it or I can easily look it up. By clicking on the magnifying glass, this will give me a list of all customers and I can start to type in to narrow things down. It also has a type ahead functionality that I can easily use by just beginning to type. So let's look up bartending. We can see here I have USA Bartending School, Nautilus Bar, and Brass Key Bar. In this example, we will use the USA Bartending School. If they have various locations, you can select a different location here if they needed to ship it to Chicago or Vegas, but let's stick with the main warehouse for now. If I have a contact that I'm working with on this order that I want to be able to easily identify later or send notifications to, I need to fill in the contact information here. By selecting the magnifying glass, I can see all contacts that are already created for this. Or, if I wanted to add a new one, I could do that here. We won't cover that in this video, but stay tuned. Let's stick with current customer, Sam Malone. So Sam will now be tied to this sales order that I'm entering. The currency is US dollars, which is the base currency, and I don't have a project code tied to this. If I did want to tie a project code, I could just go ahead and select it here. Moving on, description. This is an easy way to tell what's going on with the sales order if I'm looking at it later. This order, I was speaking to Sam, and I know it's for his break room. So if he calls me up and says, hey, what's going on with my break room order, and doesn't remember his purchase order or my sales order number, um, that will give me an easy way to identify it. By clicking Enter or Tab, that now takes me down into the sales order lines. In the sales order lines, I can begin to enter the orders that match my customer's purchase order. This is coming out of my wholesale branch, and my inventory ID is the same as my item number. So Sam needs a new Keurig for his break room. You know, his employees really need their caffeine, and let's go ahead and get that on order for him. So if I know my item number, I can start to type that in or I can start to type in part of the item description and that will pull up as well. So I'm gonna type in Keurig. You'll see that everything starts to populate that has KE typed in. I do know that he wants the Keurig model number 450, so I'm going to add that to my sales order. You'll see it defaults over to my warehouse, the line description, the unit of measure, and then I need to enter the quantity. Sam would like to purchase one of these for his warehouse. I can see on the screen that I have 21 of these on hand, 20 of these are available, and then I don't have any allocated. So I can ship this out on time for Sam, no problem. Let's go ahead and get one ordered. 
by tabbing over if the unit price is saved in your item master, that will populate. Sometimes companies sell things for a different price and you need to match the sales order to the purchase order. So in this instance, Sam is actually going to pay the unit price of $199, so I don't need to make any changes there. But if this was blank or if I needed to update that, I could override that. Let's tab again. I don't have manual price lit up because I'm not changing that. And the extended price is $199 because it's one unit at $199 times one on order. If this was multiples, it would multiply it out for you here. Tabbing on over, there's no discount on this order. But if I wanted to put a percent on here, all I would have to do is put in the discount amount. The discount amount will populate here. And then if there is a discount and your company requires a discount code to track Y, you could search for your discount codes and select one as necessary. Let's tab past that. We're not having a manual discount. I do have November 3rd auto-populated based on the requested on date at the top. And so in order for me to get it to Sam and his location, I need to actually ship this before November 3rd. In order to get it to him with enough time, I need to ship that on November 1st. I'm going to say in this example, back orders are allowed. I could also say, you know, if we do have a partial shipment or a back order, cancel the remainder or ship it complete. And if I was going to ship under the threshold, I could say the percentage that I'm allowed to ship this under. Sometimes in various industries, you'll have a plus or minus, you know, 10% or something along those lines. And that's where you can enter this shipping, this threshold for shipping right here. There's the under shipment, there's the over shipment, and then complete. If I needed to enter a purchase order, I could select a mark for PO, the PO source, the drop ship PO number, and all of my drop ship information. My salesperson is tied based on the customer. If I needed to change that, I could come in and say, okay, actually this should go to J and select J here. This is a tax exempt item. And if I needed to say where this was going to be used in, I could also select that as well. That gets us through all of the lines on the actual sales order. And we'll see here now it is committed. What I want to do at this point is go up and save the sales order. So by hovering on the save button, you'll see that does assign the sales order number. So in my system, we start everything with a sales order with the prefix SO. So this would be SO006425. Now that we have the basics on the sales order, let's take a little bit deeper dive into the different tabs that we have. So up here in the main part of the sales order, we just covered that, and we're currently on the details tab. By clicking on taxes, I can see if this is a taxable customer and the amount. Commissions, I can see my salesperson that this is tied to and the commission amount. Financial, this will let me see the financial information that's tied to the customer and what their terms are. So Sam's terms are net 30. He pays by check. And then the owner is Maxwell Baker. So own, the owner is Maxwell at my company. And if there's any problems, I might need to get with Maxwell to get them resolved. By clicking over into the shipping, I can now set the ship via. Let's say we want to ship this FedEx ground. So I'll simply click that there. If you do have the shipping carrier integration, by shopping for rates, you can see how much this will cost. I can state whether Sam said he needs a delivery confirmation. In this instance, he doesn't. And then if I needed to put my endorsements FRB or priority, those are easily accessible right here. I do want to have insurance on this shipment because I want to make sure if something happens along the way, since it's a delicate coffee maker, that it is covered by the carrier. I see my scheduled shipment date, back orders are allowed, and if they want to cancel this, I need to have a notification from Sam that he needs to cancel by 1027. That will allow me to make sure that my production team, if they were working on this, hasn't already started the order. Let's move on to the next tab of addresses. 
I can see where this is shipping to. It's shipping to USA Bartending, Attention Receiving. And here's our phone number and emails that this is going to. If I needed to override anything, such as the ship to, I could click Address Override. This will open up and allow me to change the ship to address. It comes in nice and handy to make quick changes on the fly. Same thing with billing address. These may be locked down due to security roles and rights in your system. So if you run into any problems, please get with your IT team. The next field is discounts. If we had put a discount on here, we would see our discount information. Let's click into shipments. Shipments will allow me to see any previous shipments that have happened on this order. This is a new sales order, so we haven't shipped anything out yet. So I don't have any information filled in. Same thing with payments. I can see on payments right here that Sam currently owes us $209. So when I have a call with him next time to help out my team, I might just ask him about that and see if he got a copy of the invoice. And then if I just wanted to verify all my totals, I can see right here that I have one line for $199 that's being shipped out. So I can easily make sure that my sales order is going out and matches my customer's purchase order. And speaking of purchase orders, some companies require a copy of the purchase order to be attached to the sales order for their record keeping. It's very easy to do that in Acumatica. In order to attach something in Acumatica, let's go back up to the top of the sales order, USA Bartending School. And if I wanted to add a note, I can easily record a quick little note here. Maybe I wanted to say, Sam is very happy we had this in stock. Let's go ahead and save that note. You'll see it now turns yellow, so myself or my team could click on here and easily find the information later on. I could also go ahead right here and click Activities. If I wanted to email a copy of this to Sam, so by clicking Activities, this will let me add a task add an event, or add an email. By clicking Add Email, this will bring up my attached sales order format that's been predefined by the team, and will let me email it straight from the system. The next thing I can do is go to Files. If I need to attach that customer purchase order, I can download if there was one in here, or I can simply just drag and drop and upload a new purchase order. I can attach a purchase order here. I can easily add or view any attached files. Acumatica is great because what I can do is just go from my desktop or whatever folder I have and drag and drop a copy of the purchase order or any other supported files to the system. Let's go ahead and upload that one and close out. Now if I click back into files, if I click on purchase order, I can easily view what was saved to the sales order.